Hello, everyone. Welcome to Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. It's April, and we are recognizing our limb loss and limb difference community with this special Awareness Month. My name is Carol Blymeyer. I do advocacy communications for the Amputee Coalition. And here with us today is Nicole Gross, uh, who is the Peer Support Programs Manager for the Coalition. We are going to walk you through what the Amputee Coalition is doing in the month of April to commemorate Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And we will have time for questions at the end, You'll notice in your webinar tool, there's a space to type in questions and submit them. So please feel free to type them in there and we'll moderate those questions and read them and answer them so everyone can hear them at the uh, end of the webinar. And we also wanted to let you know that our staff that are running the webinar, we're all working remotely, as I'm sure many of you who have had to do some coronavirus accommodations may be too. So if you hear a dog barking in the distance or a child running in the background acting like a T-Rex, just know that we're dealing with our new normal as we hope you are coping well with all the adjustments that we're all having to make, um, taking into account what's going on around the world right now. Um, we hope you're doing well and feeling healthy and that you're ready to really honor, support, and recognize everyone in our community this month. I'm gonna turn it over to Nicole. She's gonna walk us through a lot of the presentation. You'll hear from me on a couple of the slides, and then we'll get to questions at the end. So Nicole, take it away. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, as we kick off April for Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month, we are very proud that we've been able to um, nurture the current situation and still provide some really great ways to engage your community, uh, social community, virtual community, um, and just let you know that the coalition is here to continue to support you all however you need um, with resources, with peer support, with advocacy opportunities all throughout the month of April. I will um, provide first an overview of Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. This year for 2020, the theme is Be Strong, and we chose that theme to help recognize that it is important among normal circumstances, uncertain times, that we all strive to be strong and navigate through our journey at our very best. And we have provided opportunities um, through some uh, daily dares and advocacy opportunities to be a strong voice in your community um, and let your voices be heard, um, whether that's through your family, friends, your immediate community as well as um, your local government. Um, what is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month? As we mentioned, we designate April as Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. We use the acronym LLAM um, and it helps to encourage community members, volunteers, and supporters to raise awareness for the Limb Loss and Limb Difference community through advocacy, education, and empowerment. We'll talk about why it's important to raise awareness for our community members and how each of you that are connected to limb loss and limb difference can get involved in this um, month of Be Strong for the month of April. On the next slide, what is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month? Um, we are doing a lot of new things for this month. We have Be Strong Daily Dares that are located on the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month webpage. Yesterday was April 1st. We kicked off with a Wednesday where we wear orange on Wednesdays. That was the first daily dare. Today is to like us, follow us, tag us on social media, as well as update your cover pages in social media with the image that we have located in our media toolkit. We also have a 50 governor challenge that connects with our um, Hill Day from Home and proclamations to um, contact local um, governments and get all 50 states to um, claim April as Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And we also have opportunities 
um, for raising funds in support of our mission and supporting our community members. Obviously, we're going to talk about that in a later segment of the slides, um, and we recognize that some of our events that we typically have held in person and in group settings have had to pivot um, to provide opportunities to do virtual engagement. So we will share a lot more detail in upcoming slides, but that is an overview of what we have going on this month. And again, our website is live with all of the same information that you can dive into at your convenience. So why is raising awareness for our limb loss and limb difference community important? There are over 2 million people living with limb loss in the U.S. There are 185,000 people that undergo an amputation each year in the United States. And there are over 500 people that will lose a limb each day in the United States. Um, we anticipate by 2050 that there will be over 3.5 million people living with limb loss. So as we recognize that that is a huge jump, there is a great need to um, let people know of your specific needs if you're living with limb loss or limb difference, any of the challenges or hurdles that you are encountering on a daily basis, um, and letting us help be that voice for you and making sure that those that are on their journey get the right peer support and resources in their hands to ensure that nobody ever feels alone on their journey. Um, the, the third statistic down on the right is probably a little bit higher, and given the circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 epidemic, um, depression can really have an impact on the quality of life for people living with limb loss and limb difference, and we recognize that during these trying times, um, being connected with the community, getting your voices heard, sharing your story and your journey is of the utmost importance to ensure that you're living the best quality life. Um, the last slide, 85% of lower limb amputations are preceded by a foot ulcer. We do know that there are um, current causes relating to diabetes and cancer that um, can impact the quality of life and can cause further complications. Um, so we recognize that there are definitely those in our community that are faced with ongoing hurdles, and we hope to help be that voice and make sure that people are getting the tools and resources that they need. On the next slide, how can you get involved in Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month this year? As mentioned, there are Be Strong Daily Dares that are found on the webpage. Um, it's also embedded in our community events calendar that you can click on to learn a little bit more about what you can do on a daily basis to um, engage with our community. We have the hashtag LLAM, hashtag Limb Loss Awareness that we encourage to be used in social media posts, as well as tag the Amputee Coalition on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, so some of the examples for the Be Strong Daily Dares are sharing your Limb Loss Awareness Month why. Why are you um, raising awareness? Telling your governor about some of the um, issues that you're facing with and what does your community need? And providing some creative outlets for stress management, um, being creative with using words, providing um, image by painting or drawing something that represents your story or a statistic about limb loss and limb difference. We have awareness ribbons that are now available um, on our store, as well as awareness ribbon shirts that are found on our cafe press store. We have an opportunity to provide appreciation for our healthcare team, especially during current circumstances. We really are relying on those heroes in the healthcare system right now. We have some new opportunities to engage with our resources through Community Connections, which is our new searchable database, as well as Boston, one Boston day is April 15th, which can be a day that you do a random act of kindness in your virtual or social communities. And the last Saturday of April is Show Your Medal Day, and that is a day that we typically ask folks to get involved in person at, at group gatherings in their communities and take a picture or selfie of them wearing their medal, M-E-T-T-L-E. -E. Um, so this year we're encouraging um, pictures to be posted of you proudly displaying your medal, whether that's a prosthesis, a wheelchair, cane, walker, um, and just lets people know that you're proud to represent your community. And then we are shifting our advocacy forum that has typically been held on the Hill in April to a virtual platform. And Carol will be talking about that that is taking place at the end of this month. 
But for a full, full listing of the Daily Dares, I encourage you all to visit our website. You can download a printable PDF copy as well as review it on the interactive um, web page and the activities calendar. Uh, we have a media toolkit that includes posters, tear-off posters, a social media cover page image, the awareness image of our ribbon can be downloaded. And we also have a media toolkit for fundraising um, and a lot of other things that relate to some of our resource handouts. Um, so those are things that can be downloaded and displayed on social media, sent by email, printed off and displayed in your communities. But we do encourage you all to be mindful of the restrictions. So there are some opportunities if you're going to a doctor's appointment or need to go to the grocery store, um, there are some materials that you can print out and drop off at various locations, but being mindful of your safety. There's a way to connect with our National Limb Loss Resource Center through the 800 number listed below at, at extension one. And again, our new community connection searchable database is gonna be a great opportunity to provide local resources, state resources, and national resources that can be printed and shared with others. We also will encourage the use of our support app. It's called the Amputee Coalition Support App that can be downloaded on the Apple App Store. Google Play or a web browser link. This is a way that we can connect our community with certified peer visitors as well as our resource center um, with virtual peer support. And given the current times, we are asking that we all try our best to stay connected because we know the meaning, how meaningful it is to receive peer support on normal circumstances, but especially now as in-person restrictions are, um, in effect at various hospitals and every community um, is seeing these restrictions, our support app can provide some really um, meaningful ways to engage on a virtual standpoint by way of in-app texting and in-app video chatting. I went through the Be Strong Daily Dares um, a little bit ahead, but the, the goal is that we're just encouraging our community to get involved, whether you are um, directly impacted as someone living with limb loss or limb difference, if you're a family member caring for a loved one with limb loss or limb difference, if you're a prosthetist, if you're a hospital partner of ours, if you're one of our sponsors, we just encourage a fun way to engage in, in any way possible. If you complete at least 17 of the daily dares between April 1st and April 30th, they can be done in any order. You will receive a limited edition Amputee Coalition pin that will be mailed to you. And completed dares can be submitted through an online Be Strong Daily Dares submission form that can be found on the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month webpage. So again, summaries, every Wednesday we're encouraging folks to wear orange. We have the Limb Loss and Limb Difference activities calendar. We have awareness ribbons. The hashtags LLAM and hashtag limb loss awareness. April 15th is One Boston Day where we encourage virtual act, community acts of kindness. Show Your Metal Day is the last Saturday of April. This year it's Saturday, April the 25th. And then we encourage a lot of our resources um, and promotional materials from the media toolkit to be displayed in various ways as well as engaging with our 50 Governor Challenge to support um, insurance fairness and getting your voice heard and implement change in your community, as well as engaging with us on social media by Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I will hand it over to Carol, who will dis discuss the advocacy opportunities in our Hill Day from Home. Carol, thank you. Great, thanks, Nicole. So advocacy, this is a really important component of what the Amputee Coalition does to serve the limb loss and limb difference community. There are a number of issues from research funding to insurance, insurance fairness, to access to care, whether it's Medicare, Medicaid. We work uh, to educate state, federal, local lawmakers about the issues that are important to our community and we encourage them to make the right decisions when it comes to creating and changing laws so that our community is served. We traditionally uh, have done a, uh, an in-person 
Capitol Hill Day where advocates fly in from across the country, we educate them on issues, and we take them to Capitol Hill so they can meet their senators and their representatives to educate them on issues that are important to our community and encourage them to vote a certain way on laws that are important to all of us. Because of what's going on with COVID-19 and because congressional offices are now closed to the public and in Washington, D.C., there is a stay-at-home order, so none of us are really allowed to go anywhere or do anything unless it's an emergency, we had to convert our in-person advocacy forum to something that's now going to take place online. We're really excited about it. We're in those final plans. Okay, final how we're going to execute it and, and have these informational sessions done and the tools needed for you all to communicate with your members of Congress. So we're having a Hill Day from home. Instead of taking everybody on Capitol Hill for one day, we're going to give you an opportunity to be able to do it from the comfort of your home. So we will um, stay tuned. If you're on our email list, you'll get an email about this. You can also check our website, We'll put something on the homepage in the next few days with an agenda and how we plan to lay this all out. And we encourage you all to attend because your voice can only be heard on Capitol Hill and with our lawmakers when you raise it. And we're giving you that opportunity to be able to do that with us collectively as part of our community on April 27th and April 28th. So that's one way in which we're going to do some advocacy and some lawmaker education around our issues at the end of this month. Another thing that we're uh, doing, uh, we are working with the governors of all 50 states and we encourage you to reach out to them. Um, traditionally, the United States Senate um, proclaims April as Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And then we also encourage all 50 governors to do the same thing. Now, again, our world is different right now. Um, our governors and their staff are focused on a lot of different things. However, it doesn't mean that we still can't reach out and educate them about it. So on our website in the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month section, we have a section where you can go in and find a template letter that you can write to your governor and his or her staff to educate them on what it means to live with limb loss and limb difference and encourage them or ask them to issue a proclamation in your state proclaiming that April is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. You're also welcome to use that proclamation and that letter template to send it to the mayor of your city or town or to send it to a state legislator. Um, there's no limit in doing that. We encourage you to use your best judgment. If you know that your governor and their staff are really tied up with COVID-19 and they're on some national task forces, you may not hear back from them. And that's completely understandable. But we still would encourage you to take that moment to send that to help educate their staff that even though we have everything else that's going on in the world right now, that it, this impacts our community and our community still has a voice and we still want to educate. Another thing that we would encourage you to do this month is on our website, we have a link to our lead advocate volunteer program. To be a lead advocate means that you get special access to a lot of our advocacy and education tools and seminars to be able to learn more about these public policy issues that have an impact on our community, whether it's laws that we need to change or strengthen or new laws or regulatory provisions that we need to create through the federal government, or in some cases, state governments, you get to have a leading voice with us on those. And you'll get to work with other volunteers in your states and in your communities to help them learn how to educate our lawmakers. It's really a fun opportunity. It's eye-opening. It gives you a whole new look 
at the way our government works, and it'll help give you that insider perspective on uh, how challenging it can be to get laws to change or to create new laws. But it also opens up a great opportunity for you to build a relationship with your members of Congress and their staff. And we think that's something that's really important for our community to do. So we'll have easy access to those links on our website in our Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month section. Nicole, can you take us to the next slide? We also have a fundraising kit on our site. So we took our, our typical grassroots fundraising kit, which typically has a lot of things in it about how you can create events at home and bake sales and barbecues and things that you can do in person with other people. And we've retooled it so that now all of our fundraising activities are things that you can do online, on the telephone and in other ways that don't involve face-to-face -face interactions since I can't imagine we would want to send any of you to a bake sale or a barbecue and make you stand six feet away from people and have to shout out our message. That's not what we're encouraging right now. We want you to have the safety and the comfort of being able to do things from home. So a couple of things that are in this fundraising kit you can set up the Amputee Coalition as an Amazon Smile charity so that a portion of the proceeds that Amazon ordinarily would make on a sale of any of the materials or goods they sell on there, they donate a portion of that to the Amputee Coalition. You can create a personal GoFundMe charity fundraising page. If you ever have done this before, the platform used to be called CrowdRise. It's now owned by GoFundMe. So you can set up a personal fundraiser for your friends and your colleagues on Facebook or Twitter to donate in your name and in your honor to the MBT Coalition. You can also find ways to donate directly to us so that we can continue to provide the support and education and resources to the more than 2 million people in the US right now with limb loss and limb difference. And there are plenty of other creative ideas in there that we would encourage you to take a look at. And if you have any ideas of things that you would wanna do from a fundraising perspective for us that we can be supportive of, we encourage you to reach out to us so that we can help you do that. Our email address is LLAM at amputee-coalition.org. And now, my favorite part of the webinar, we're gonna do some questions and answers. So one of the most popular questions we've gotten so far that's been submitted is wondering if we're gonna have a recording of this webinar available for all of you or for people who weren't able to make it today. And the answer is yes. We will, as soon as this webinar is over, takes a few minutes, half an hour for it to fully download. And then we make sure we go through and make sure the audio is good and we do a quality control test. And then we will upload this to the homepage on our website, which is amputee-coalition.org. So we'll have it there later today and you are welcome to send the link to it to your friends, your colleagues. For those of you in organizations, please feel free to share this with your communications managers, social media managers, and if anyone in your organization has questions about how to work with us, please have them reach out, and we would love to collaborate with you in any way that we can. So let's talk about, oh, we have a comment here from Nikki Stoner in Michigan who said that their organization got a letter from the governor of Michigan last year about limb loss and limb difference awareness month. Nikki, that's awesome. We hope you'll reach out to your governor again this year. I know she has been very involved in a lot of the COVID-19 work, but I know her staff is very well educated about our community. So I hope you'll reach out to them again this year. Um, we have a question from Yannette Santiago, who wants to know how can we become part of the advocacy program? Yannette, we will have a link to that 
on our website uh, in the limb loss and limb difference awareness month section. You can also just go to amputeecoalition.org and search the word advocacy or find it in our navigation toolbar and it'll come up right away and you can learn how to sign up for our email alerts and how to go through lead advocate training. We have a question from Laureen who wants to know if we have a list of chairlift companies. Nicole, is that something that you want the Limb Loss Resource Center to handle? Yes, we can absolutely take that request um, and provide some resources. Great. And we've got a question here from Nick who wants to know what we are doing to address awareness of the condition known as PAD, which I think you mean peripheral arterial disease that is those affected by diabetes or pre-diabetes. So Nicole, is that something we have some fact sheets and resources on with the yes, research center? Great. We will. We have some fact sheets. We can also um, loop in our re research manager, Janet, um, who can provide some updates as to um, all that's being done to connect with um, diabetes associations and particularly, I know she has mentioned PAD, um, so we can definitely loop Janet into that discussion. Great, Nick, we are gonna have one of our team members email you directly after this webinar is over. Um, we do, we have, because you registered with your email address, we've got your contact information so that we can have someone get in touch with you directly and help you with that. We've got a question here from John who says, I'm looking to reach out to New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy to educate and bring awareness to our state. I was going to take a lead advocacy class in Washington during Hill Day, so now when will I be able to take the course? John, that is something that we are working on as part of uh, transitioning our advocacy forum to online. And we are gonna have someone from our government relations team email you directly after this is over and we'll tell you all about when a new training can happen. And uh, we'll, we wanna get you on board. New Jersey is a very important state to us. And I know the governor has been, um, he's been doing a lot uh, obviously with COVID-19 right now, but I know he does have staff on board that is working um, with our community. So we would love to be able to have you on our team to help reach out to him as well. Okay. Oh, this is great. So Gary Patterson had a question too about lead advocacy training being offered at the national conference. Uh, Gary, that's something that we're working on. Our national conference is scheduled uh, August 20th to 22nd um, here in Washington, DC. Again, we're following state and federal um, guidance on in-person events. Right now, that planning is still moving forward for this to be an in-person event. And lead advocate training is something that we are having as a component of our national conference. So stay tuned on that. Um, we will also work with you to see if there are ways we can get some training done, maybe separate and apart from that. Um, Gary also told us that he got the mayor of his town to sign a proclamation and the governor of Arkansas and Congressman Rick Crawford in the House of Representatives about limb loss and limb difference awareness month. Um, I'm assuming that was from last year, but if it's from this year, please send us screenshots of everything. We would love to see it and we'd love to post it on the website. We have a question here from Mariah and Nicole, you might be able to answer this. Are there any grants or scholarships that are offered to amputees to return back to school? Yes, there are. And our resource center manager is um, overseeing that. So we will direct that to Caitlin and we will send a follow-up email to you. But yes, the question is absolutely, we do have that and it's in the works. Perfect. 
And then Mariah had a follow-up question for us that says that she is registered and completed the advocacy application and paid for the background research, but was unable to attend the training in Boston. So will she have to apply and repay for future training courses? Um, Mariah, this sounds like the certified peer visitor training class. Um, I, I do recall your name. Um, no, if you were not able to attend a class, we will just transfer um, the payment and the background check over towards a future class. Great. And then Laureen also had a question, that, again, that she would like to receive some info on, uh, on education and some training. So again, Laureen, we've got all these questions logged in our system, and we've got your email addresses. We are going to hand this to our, um, our staff uh, and get them to return all of these answers to all of your great questions on this chat. I'm really excited to see how interested you all are. Larry wants to know, do we have any idea roughly when we will have material to support Limb Loss Awareness Month and virtual Hill Day asks? Larry, great question. I can tell you already know a little bit about advocacy because you used the word asks in there. We're gonna have all of that pulled together in the next week or two and have that available for attendees who are going to register for our virtual online advocacy forum. Again, we this was a, a pretty fast pivot. We, we wanted to hold out as long as we could to keep the advocacy forum in person. Uh, and then once we knew that we were no longer going to be able to do that, we've really had to retool that program. And it's taken our staff some time and effort to do that in addition to everything else that we are working on. So we appreciate your patience on that. I would say check in with us maybe around the 20th. Uh, maybe we'll be able to have some more things online informational asks and things like that again around the forum. Um, it's just taken us some time to work out this pivot. So we really appreciate your efforts and your, your desire to want to work with us on this. And we're also being really aware and, and cognizant of what our colleagues who work in Congress need and want from us. You know, this is a big pivot and transition for Congress and congressional staff. Many of them are you know working remotely and working from home and home offices and it's taken them a while to get their systems all transitioned out and so much as we're doing you know what we can in this quick time period we really have to be sensitive to what their workflow now and how they're adjusting too so it is an hour by hour uh, transition for all of us as this situation continues to develop so as soon as we can get this information out, we absolutely will. It's uh, it's definitely top of mind for all of us. We want to be able to serve you all and serve you well. And Carol, uh, on that note about yeah. fulfillment, um, I wanted to just use this opportunity to inform our community members that um, our Knoxville office has been our place where we have shipped our patient materials and our certified peer visitor materials, our hospital partnerships, um, resource materials as well as for support groups. We have had to um, outsource our fulfillment to a third party vendor. So there's been um, all of our materials are being shipped out to um, a, a third party vendor who is going to be handling our orders. So you are still able to go to our store and request materials. Um, they are just being shipped out through a different party. It's not coming through staffing given our offices are closed but we are still in operation. So if you do have an interest in receiving some of our materials, you can go to our store and submit your orders and they are being fulfilled. Um, we apologize for the delay. We've had to make a pivot as well and it's taken us a little bit of time to get things back in up operation. That goes for the same thing with our awareness ribbons. We had um, our first order sold out faster than we anticipated and we quickly made a reorder that took a little bit of a delay because it was among the um, pandemic changes and um, we apologize for the delay there. We have received our shipment of um, new ribbons. They are also going to the third party vendor and we are accepting orders for those free ribbons on our store um, and we will be processing those and getting them shipped out as quickly as we can. 
that's great. Thank you, Nicole, for telling them that I had I was going to bring that up earlier and I forgot to do it. Thank you. Um, we've got a couple of questions from a few different people who have signed up for lead advocate training in Washington State and other locations, and they're asking about how we're going to transition that training to now be online. We will have our government relations and advocacy team get in touch with you. That's something, again, that we are figuring out how we're going to pivot that to an online training that will work for everyone and give everyone equal opportunity and access to come online and learn how to do that. Uh, Larry has asked us um, if we're going to attempt to coordinate efforts on Virtual Hill Day. Yes, sir, we are. We, our part of our program will be that one day consists of educational sessions where we talk about advocacy and we learn about all of the asks and the requests that we're going to make to Congress. And then the next day will be a day where we have our entire community reaching out via email, phone calls, social media to members of Congress. So yes, it will all be very well coordinated so that our voice is heard together collectively as one community um, at the end of the month on April 28th. So we're very excited about that. Um, let me see if we have got some other questions here. We've got some questions that I know we're going to have our uh, resource team get back to you all individually on. These are not necessarily questions about limb loss and limb difference awareness month. Monica's got a question about um, suggestions in which a new support group can stay in touch and continue to stay together as a group and as a community now that we're all online. Monica, we've got a team uh, on staff who is working on that right now. They're working on some tips and tricks for how you can use some online tools, whether it's Skype or Zoom or FaceTime or our support app. Uh, ways in which you can get in touch and stay in touch with your group. So we'll have information out to you all soon on that. Um, I'm seeing a lot of very sweet comments on here that are thanking us for the work that we're doing and the support that we're giving. And I just want to turn it around and, and thank you all. Uh, we have heard from so many people in our community um, who are just reaching out to check in on us and see how we're doing. And it is incredibly heartening and and warming and beautiful and it makes us, it just makes us feel good and we hope we can turn around and, and help you all and continue to support you all as our world is, is upside down and we hope you all are staying strong and staying healthy and staying well. Um, we wanna have an open dialogue and you know communication and conversation with you all during this time. So, please follow us on our social media channels. That's a place where we really have some good in-depth conversation about a lot of these issues in our community. And we wanna make sure that you are engaged in that with us. Um, we wanna all stick together right now, especially. And uh, please let us know if there are ways in which we can support you and provide educational resources in new and different ways that you might need that we might not be thinking about, um, please let us know so we can figure out what else the community might need in that area. Um, Nicole, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to sign us out of here. And uh, I just, I wanna take a minute before I turn it over to Nicole to thank all of you for being here today with us um, for this webinar. It's so wonderful to see so many familiar names in these questions and uh, to see some of your, your faces would have been great too. But let's, let's all connect on social media too, since we're all online a heck of a lot more now than we were. So Nicole, I'm gonna let you wrap us up. Thank you. Um, so the last slide here is the direct link for the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. Um, you can find that on various social media channels that we are promoting. There is the 800 number to connect with our resource center, as well as the LLAM at amputee-coalition.org. That's the email address to direct anything relating to Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And if 
we cannot answer those questions, um, we will pass them on to the appropriate team member who can support um, a timely response. And again, I just want to say thank you for being involved in this webinar today. And we're really excited about some brand new opportunities to engage our community members in whatever stage they are in their journey and in whatever capacity you all can relate to the limb loss and limb difference community. We're really excited to see how the Be Strong Daily Dares go. And again, if there's anything that you all need for us during the month of April, we are here for you and we are hoping to help you all get your voices heard and get your stories out there in an effort to stay connected among um, everything else that's going on. And so for that, we say thank you. And if you have any follow-up questions, um, please feel free to let us know.